Ukrainian fighters inside Mariupol's besieged Azovstal steel plant say that 20 women and children have been evacuated, but that hundreds remain trapped inside. But 20 women and children have been allowed to leave the besieged steelworks in Mariupol, the final part of the city where Ukrainian troops are holding out against the Russian invasion. But there are still about a thousand civilians inside the steelworks, with talks ongoing about freeing them as Russia intensifies its attacks in the east of Ukraine. Tim Moffat has the details. It's warm and cool. Scenes that have become so familiar over the past nine weeks. Another home destroyed, another family rescuing what they can from the aftermath of a Russian attack. Dopropilia in the Donetsk region of eastern Ukraine. Seven civilians, including three children, were injured here, according to authorities. Everything is destroyed, this man says. The house is, you can pretty much say, uninhabitable. So we are holding on. The Lord will help us, and we will win. The Azovstal steelworks in Mariupol, the final part of the southern port city still under the control of Ukrainian troops. Sealed off more than a week ago under orders from President Putin, it's thought around 20 civilians were able to leave the site yesterday. According to Russian media, the group included six children under 14. It's not known where they were taken. Earlier, an advisor to Ukraine's defence minister pleaded for humanitarian corridors to be set up to allow others to escape the city. Tens of thousands of people are still trapped there and Russian war criminals still are refusing to allow humanitarian evacuation corridors. And this is a major problem and the Ukrainian authorities are saying on a daily basis that, you know, the international community must intervene with more force. In Odessa, in the southwest of the country, preparations continue for a possible Russian invasion from the sea. Ukrainian officials said last night the runway at the city's airport was destroyed by a Russian missile strike, although no one was injured. As far as Russia is concerned, this is all still part of a special military operation, but there is talk that President Putin will officially declare it a war. If President Putin may be using the parade on the 9th of May declares this a war, uh, then the Russian legal position changes. So, for example, he can keep the conscripts that are currently serving, whose time is, is about up, he can keep them in, and he can mobilize more reserves, more resources, and, and, and more of Russian uh, industry. And what it would indicate is that this is now a long war. It's not a special military operation. It's something that President Putin will cast as uh, an existential fight for Russia to protect all Russian-speaking peoples. There was an unexpected visitor to Ukraine yesterday. Hollywood actress and UN special envoy Angelina Jolie arrived in Lviv. She met people who've been caught up in this conflict and others too young to fully appreciate its true horrors. Tim Muffet, BBC News. Our correspondent Joe Inwood is in Lviv. I'm going to ask you first about Mariupol, the fact that the 20 women and children have been allowed to leave the steelworks, which means most of the civilians are still inside. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is a breakthrough, but I think it's fair to say a very small one. The numbers are a bit unknown here, but we think there probably are more than 100, maybe up to 1,000 civilians stuck in there and wounded service people as well. The figures we're talking about, the Ukrainians say 20, the Russians say 25. But this is a breakthrough. Let, let's be clear. We've been talking for, for weeks now about opening a humanitarian corridor. And always I say it's more than hope than an expectation. And it fails, but we have got some people out. And so I think this will be viewed as a diplomatic success, a small one. There are a couple of unanswered questions, though, still. Where are they going to be going? That's a big one. The Ukrainians say they hope it's going to be to the town of Zaporizhia. That's the city that most people have been going to. We don't have confirmation from the Russians. And another one is, what was the role of the United Nations in this? Because, as you'll remember, Antonio Gutierrez had a, a difficult trip to Russia and Ukraine. If they were involved in this, then, well, that will be a small diplomatic success for the Secretary General. OK. In terms of um, people like Angelina Jolie going to Lviv, where you are, I mean, what do people, what do Ukrainians make of that? I think they'll be really pleased, but I don't think they will think this is a major issue. It's, uh, it's, let's be frank, um, it's not 
the main issue people will be talking about here. Uh, I think, though, that in general, Western support, Western interest has been crucial, but that's really because of financial support and military aid rather than wider public support. Of course, that is crucial for the long-term support that they need, but really the Western backing that they'd be most relieved to see is military, it's the hardware, and that is the thing that they're going to be really focusing on.